Welcome back to another episode of Smalls That Sell. And this is a special episode, not only because we're wrapping up the One Picket Family Build-Off Challenge, but also because I'm going to be using my build to prove the power of Smalls. So for the One Picket Challenge, I chose to build an Anirondack Chair Squirrel Feeder. And actually, with this design, you can build three of these out of two fence pickets. So I think it's a pretty cool design. You can have the traditional little screw there for a corn cob, or you can put a little bucket on the front for peanuts or whatever. But this is what the challengers are up against, and it's going to be up to you guys to decide. But before I get into that, let me address a common request that I get on how to build a full-size Adirondack chair. So there's a couple of reasons why I have not already made a video on how to build one. First reason is there's already tons of awesome videos out there teaching how to make these. And the second reason is I teach you how to make high profit, low cost items on this channel. And I don't think the Adirondack chairs are high profit right now. And I'm not saying that you can't make money selling those. There's plenty of people that do. I'm just saying that you can make more money selling these. Let me explain. First of all, the competition for these chairs are high. So right now in all of the big box stores, you can pick these up for $70 a piece. So that got me thinking, how much would it actually cost me to build one of these using the exact same material? It's all three quarter inch, but there's not any two bys or anything like that in there. Two by cedar right now is extremely high. So I found a very similar design to this that came with plans and a cut list that was put out by Norm Abram. And his version is very close to this and used all three quarter inch material. So I took his cut list and priced out just what the material would cost me at the big box stores. And the price was exactly the same in all of these stores, $115 and some change. So 115 bucks just for the material. Plus you have the competition mass producing and selling at 70 bucks. So obviously we can't make one of these chairs and sell it for $70. Now you may be able to find that material a little cheaper from a local sawmill that has a dry kiln, even if you do find it cheaper, but you would still have to bring it home, join it, plane it, do all of that fun stuff, and then your price point's gonna be right back up to the same. So obviously we cannot spend $115 to build a $70 chair. So let's say that you put your twist to it using the same design, the same amount of material, and you decide to price these at $150 a piece. So even at $150, even once you have this thing built and sold, that leaves you with $35 profit or 23% profit margin. So now let's talk about these small chairs. If you build them in batches of three and we'll be using cedar, that's $2.52 per chair. And the ones that were similar that I could find in the market, they were all on a price range from around $30 to $40. So let's say that you sell one of these chairs for $40. That's the high end of the price range. I think that you would sell a lot more kind of in the middle, but $40 is definitely not out of the ballpark. So at $40, your profit would be $37.48. And the profit from the full size chair was $35, selling it at $150. Using those price points, that means that one, just one of these chairs chairs will make you more profit than a full-size Adirondack chair. And to top it off, the profit margin for this would be at 93.7% versus 23% for the full-size chair. Follow the margins. So for all those people out there that say, yeah, you would have to build a thousand of these things to equal the profit that I get for this one big one. Here's the proof that they're wrong and the power of selling smalls. Well, you may be thinking that I can get more than 150 bucks out of a full size chair. Well, you're probably right, but it doesn't matter because in order to achieve the same profit margin as this, you would have to sell that chair for $1,875 and that's not gonna happen. But for the rest of this example, I'm gonna say that we're not getting top of the market prices for this. We're gonna go to the middle. We're gonna stay competitive. So we're gonna say we're selling these things for $35 a piece. They would still leave you with a profit of $32.48 and a 92.8% profit margin. Heck, even if you almost felt like giving these things away at 20 bucks, that would still leave you with an 87.4% profit margin. Okay, so the next question is how long does it take to build each one of these? Not accounting for the time that it takes to actually build an item is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when trying to decide on an item to build and sell. So to test this for the smaller chairs, I set up jigs, templates as if I was gonna be making several and time myself from the beginning to the end. And I'm not telling you guys this just to keep you from making larger items, you should. You should keep pushing yourself. But like I've talked about in previous videos, smaller items are a way to supplement your income in between the sale of larger items. You just need to be particular on what larger items that you actually decide to build. And if you have no desire to build larger items, then this is just a way to show you that you can still make good money with a side hustle of just selling smalls. While I finish up this time trial, if you're still with me at this point, 
Make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell in your bottom right hand corner. So from start to finish using my jigs and templates and all of that, I was able to build this in less than 30 minutes. And if I was actually mass producing these different parts, I would have been able to do it even faster. I'm not going to complain about taking 30 minutes to build a $35 build because that puts our profit per hour at almost $65. And since I personally have never built a full size Adirondack chair, I really didn't have much to go off of as far as time. But I found a great video by Steve Ramsey that he put out not too long ago that teaches you how to make a very similar chair in a weekend. So if it really takes two days to build one of these chairs, that puts your profit per hour at $2.19. But let's say that you use patterns and jigs and you can build one in half the time that Steve can. That would still leave your profit per hour at $4.38 versus $65. So let's say that you took that 115 bucks that you were going to spend on lumber for the large chair and instead you bought lumber for these. With that same amount of money, you would have enough material to build 45 of these things. At $35 a piece, that's $1,462 in profit. Well, I think that I've made my point about the power of smalls. Now let me teach you how to make these things so you can get busy making some money. So if you're building this out of the fence picket, we're actually going to use the dog ears that are made onto the picket as part of our design. So this is gonna make the stand that the chair actually sits on. So our first cut's gonna be at 12 inches and then we're gonna make a second cut at 10 inches. From that point on, everything else will be ripped down into smaller parts on the table saw. And as always, I will be teaching you to build this step-by-step, -step, giving you all the dimensions of every part along the way. But if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to my Etsy shop. I'll throw a link in the description as well as the comments. Okay, so we have our first two boards that we cut off of our picket. This 12 inch board with the dog ears is gonna be the top and this 10 inch board will be the base. Let's go ahead and get those attached. Okay, so for our backboard, we're gonna start by measuring one inch up and then I'm gonna make a line going across my board. This is where the bottom of the bottom board will actually line up to. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and flip this board over and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the back. The reason why I'm also marking this on the back is is because I'm going to be attaching this from the back. And this line will tell me exactly where my board is at on the other side. And this is optional, but before I actually attach this bottom board, I'm gonna round over my two outside edges. And then to attach the two, I'm gonna be using wood glue and brad nails to start out with. Then once I get those in, again, this is optional. I'm gonna throw a few screws in this. I know that I said that I wasn't gonna be using a lot of screws, but since most of the weight will be on this board, I thought that I should add in just a little bit of extra support. So with the remaining board from our fence picket, I went ahead and cut two boards that are inch and a half wide that are seven inches long. And then the rest of the material, I cut into strips. I cut a couple of strips that are one inch wide. Then the rest of the strips, I cut at three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna start by cutting some parts for our chair bottom. And for this, we'll be using the three quarter inch material. So with one of our three quarters of an inch wide strips, we're going to place it on its edge. We'll make a 15 degree cut, move the saw back to zero or 90 degrees. And then from the tip of that, we're going to measure four and a quarter inch. Then we'll cut that flush. And we'll be needing two of these parts. Let's go ahead and cut two more boards that are four and a quarter inches long. So using one of our three quarters of an inch wide boards, let's cut four parts for our base. For two of these boards, we're going to set our miter saw at 15 degrees. We will measure four and a quarter in length and with the board set flat on the saw we will make our cut so this is what it should look like so from the tip of this angle to the tip of this board should measure four and a quarter inches then we'll cut two more boards at four and a half inches that do not have an angle so then to assemble this bottom we're going to take our two boards with angles and place them on the outside and we're just going to be using butt joints here and then we'll take our two other boards and that will be the front and the back the end with the angles will be the back of the seat so now with our seat belt, let's go ahead and set that aside and cut our parts for the back of the chair. You know how much I love using reclaimed wood. Well, the sponsor of today's video, Original Grain, noticed as well and reached out to me about making a line of watches from my own personal stockpile. And these things turned out awesome. So what a lot of you may not know is that I actually grew up in my family's flooring mill. We would dismantle old structures, resaw and remill the material. The wood that you see on my walls and now in Original Grain's Prohibition Era watches, it's all Bogalusa Longleaf Heart Pine that we reclaim from Prohibition Era bourbon barrel rack houses. I chose this material for their watches because of its beauty and the history of the distillery that it came from. We reclaimed this from the Glenmore Distillery, which was one of six only six distilleries that were issued a government license to sell whiskey for medical purposes during prohibition i just thought that it was super cool that some of the material that i helped reclaim is now in these beautiful watches and a part of original grains american heritage collection i'll throw a link in the description where you can learn more about the watches themselves and even pick yourself up one and obviously these watches hold some sentimental value to me 
But the way that I look at it is that anyone wearing one of these is not just wearing a timepiece, they're actually wearing a piece of our American history. So we have our three quarter inch strips out. Let's go ahead and cut our seat backing. So for the seat backing, we're gonna be needing five boards that are eight inches long. And while we're here, let's go ahead and cut our top back brace. So we're still using three quarter material. I'm gonna set the saw to 15 degrees and this part will be six inches from tip to tip. Then I'm gonna take a one inch strip and cut a six and a half inch board off of it. We'll be using this for a bottom brace. And now we're gonna cut the arched back into our five backboard pieces. That's all that I've done is clamp them together. I'm going to measure down five eighths of an inch on each outside edge. And then you can take anything that is flexible and make your arch. I'll also have a template for this arch in the plans if you decide that you want those. Now we'll just cut that arch out with our jigsaw. And while it's clamped together, I'll go ahead and hit it with the sander. And while I'm finishing this up, just a reminder, we have a new Discord channel. Our Bragboard has a permanent home and our Patreon community is bigger and better than ever. I'll make sure to throw links in the description for all of those. So with our arch cut, let's go ahead and fan these out. And to do this, I'm just gonna take a square edge and put it on the bottom. Our center board will stay center and the tops will be arched out three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna be using some scrap pieces of three quarter to get my spacing. And now that our spacing is correct, we need to get our arch back. So in order to do that, you can actually just eyeball this. But if you wanna be exact, from the edge of our center board, we'll drop down the two middle boards a quarter of an inch. And then from the outside edge of the middle boards, we'll drop our outer board down a quarter of an inch. So now that we have our board spacing and our arch the way that we want it, we're going to take our upper back brace that we cut earlier, where we have 20 degrees on each end. We'll measure down two and a half inches from the top of the center board. And then we will install this brace. And again, if you were gonna be making several of these, this is a perfect place for a jig. So now it's time to attach our backing to our seat. So we will be attaching the back, the angled part, to the bottom boards of our back slats. So now it's starting to look like a chair. So next on the back, let's go ahead and install our bottom brace. And this is the board that we cut earlier out of the one inch material that is six inches long. Before I install this, I'm gonna go ahead and round over a couple of these edges. I'm gonna be measuring down an inch and three quarter from the top brace. And for our spacing on the sides, we'll make sure to leave three quarters of an inch on each side. Okay, so once we have our base attached to our back, what I like to do is go ahead and take the stand and let's just clamp this into the center. So just line up the center board with the center of the stand, spring clamp, and we'll work from here. This is gonna make it a lot easier to uh, add the legs, things like that. Plus you can always take it off if you need to change anything. So let's go ahead and cut those leg parts. So for the legs, we're gonna be using our one inch material. We're gonna need two of these that are four and one quarter inch long. And we're also gonna be cutting our arm braces that will attach to the legs. This is also one inch material. And we'll need two of these cut at one and a half inches with a 45 degree angle on one side. And when you go to cut the 45s for the arm support, just stand the board on its edge, set your saw to 45 degrees and make your cuts. Since I'm needing two parts, I like to put my 45s on the ends of a longer board and then we'll make our final length cut at an inch and a half. I'm just gonna line the top of the supports up with the top of the legs. These are more or less just for decoration. Now I'll go ahead and install my legs. I want an inch and a half spacing between the bottom of my seat and my stand. And I want the legs to be installed flush with the outside edge of the seat. And now with the legs installed, let's go ahead and attach this to our base. So first let's make sure this backboard is centered on our mounting board. And then with our front legs flush, this should leave us one inch from the top of the back of our base. And then I'll go ahead and clamp this into place so it doesn't move. You can install this by using wood glue and brad nails, or if you'd like to add a little bit of extra support, you can throw in a couple of screws from the front or the back. I'm gonna install mine from the back. I'm gonna mark the top of my back braces, and I'll just draw a line across here for reference. I'm gonna pre-drill and throw in a couple of inch and a quarter screws. And now it's time to use those two one and a half by seven inch boards that we cut at the beginning. We're gonna use these to make our arms. And for that, we'll head to the jigsaw. So I'm gonna lay out the design of my arm. You can either go by these measurements, or if you decide to get the plans, I'll make sure to put a traceable template in there. But to start with, I'm gonna make a mark at three quarters on one end. And then from the end, I'm going to measure out an inch and a half, make a mark and draw a line. I'm gonna measure down to the three inch mark. From the inch and a half to the three inch mark, this is gonna make the shape of the arm. You can either freehand this, use the template, or use anything bendable to make this mark. Next, we're just gonna round off our ends. And to do this, I'm just gonna make a mark at three quarter, then a half of an inch down from the sides. Again, you can freehand this or use a guide. It does not have to be perfect because we can always shape this with the sander. And now it's time to use the jigsaw to cut out our outline. After a little bit of sanding, use your first arm as a template to cut out your second arm. So now that we have both of our arms cut, let's go ahead and get them installed. I'm gonna let the back rest on the bottom back support 
in the front on the top of the front legs. From the front legs, we want to make sure that it is centered and we'll leave about a quarter of an inch of overhang. Just a couple more things left and we are done. Let's go ahead and install the seat bottom. And for the seat bottom, we'll be using our three quarter inch material and we'll be needing six boards that are four and a quarter inches long. With our seat boards cut, let's go ahead and get those installed. I'm just placing my very first one towards the very back. Then I'll be using even spacing all the way to the front. So with everything assembled, let's go ahead and pre-drill our mounting screws on the top and the bottom of the back mounting bracket. I'm gonna place these pre-drilled mounting hose two and three quarters in and a half of an inch down. I'll use those same measurements for the bottom. So we need to add in this little cross brace that also acts as a back leg. And for this, we're gonna be using our one inch material and we're gonna cut two boards that are seven and three quarter inch long with a 26 degree angle on each end. So we'll start out by cutting our first 26 degree angle and then I'll measure down seven and three quarter. I'm gonna draw a straight line here. And this straight line is gonna guide me because I need angles on opposite ends. So I actually need the tip of my next angle to be on the bottom. Now we have seven and three quarter from tip to tip. Then to install these legs, I'm just gonna slide it into place, make a mark on the bottom of my seat where I know where to glue. And then I'll go ahead and nail these into place. I'll also be adding wood glue to each end. And now we have this super cool, perfect little Adirondack, Adirondack, however you say it. Again, I'm not the best with pronouncing fancy French words or whatever it is. These things are awesome, made out of one fence picket. I went ahead and added a screw to the front just for a corn cob so you can screw that in, but that's up to you. These things made out of cedar will sell just like they are. You may spray on some exterior urethane. It's just an oil base that will just soak in and help protect it. Other than that, if you decide to use pine to build these, you can paint it, stain it, do whatever that you would like. Regardless of how you make these, these things will sell like crazy. As far as pricing, test your area, see if anybody else is making something like this, which I doubt that they are. And if they're not, then start high and work your way down. Pretty cool. If I was a squirrel, I would love to sit at this thing. So who do you think won the competition? Great builds here, all of them high profit, low cost. Drop your honest votes into the comments and I promise that I won't rub it in too much with the kids. This is just one example of how even beginner woodworkers can make great money with the woodworking side hustle and how even full-time more advanced woodworkers can help supplement their business income between projects and sales of larger items. I hope you all were able to take a ton of useful information away from this video and put it to good use. Until next time, guys, we'll see ya.